All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 135 pound division where we're getting more of the same stuff going on. Uh, there is a subscriber to my channel that goes by the name of Fahim Satour that loves to call the 135 pound division the V A G I N I A weight class. In this case, it is more demands for more money, fights being held up, and a lot of blame going around. This time, the blame, from what I'm being told, is being put on Errol Spence Jr. for why the Shakur Stevenson versus, versus Frank Martin fight is not taking place and why Shakur Stevenson is going to go fight another PBC fighter by the name of Edwin DeSantos, De Los Santos. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 135 pound division where we have a whole lot of very, very talented fighters and almost no fights getting going off and taking place without a lot of drama. And this fight with Shakur Stevenson, uh, who was ordered to fight Frank Martin, is no exception. Frank Martin is a fighter that is represented by Errol Spence Jr. and Man Down Promotions. He's trained by Derek James and the fight fell through. So reasonably people ask what is going on? Why would Frank Martin turn down a fight with Shakur Stevenson for a championship uh, for a championship. Now, before I get into the details of it, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much for your continued support. It really does mean a lot more than you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this is irritating though. I got a message that was sent to me and I was out on Twitter listening to what people had to say on Twitter, um, videos being done based off an interview that came off of a from a very good, a very good YouTube channel it goes by the name of the spit, the spit bucket podcast. It is on YouTube. You can go check them out. They do a very, very good job. I have definitely used quotes from them in the past. So I want to make sure that I give credit to the, to the source video and the people that originally got the information. And that is the spit bucket podcast. So, uh, my understanding of what took place, what was said was that, and this is just really funny to me how all of this stuff is going on in the lightweight division, right? And as before I get into the details of it though, let me say one more thing. I always tell you guys that there is there business is business. Whether it's boxing, whether it is uh a, you are whether you have a lawn care business, whether you have your whether you sell Coca-Cola, you know, whether you have a restaurant, business is business and the basic core fun functions of business are the same. And you can, and in order to make a professional boxing match, you have to take care of the business around it because you're doing it for profit, right? And if the business is not right, if you do not handle all of your th the things that needs to take place, you're not going to be able to reach and you're not going to be able to achieve the ultimate goal of business, which is to make money. So when I hear a lot of this duck, 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 everybody's ducking, this guy's ducking, that guy's ducking, it gets on my nerves, man, because really the only time that I would say that somebody's ducking and I've done it before, I said it with Terrence Crawford when, and before the fight took place, the fight before he fought David Avenition when he dropped out of the Errol Spence Jr. fight, he said that he accepted everything. This camp said it. So I said, look, man, I don't see any good reason why you can't take that fight. That seems to me to be a duck. This thing that's going on with Frank Martin and Shakur Stevenson, I've been hesitant to do that because I did not know what the deal was. Because it, but 
as you know, things start coming out. So in this case, things start coming out. Now, Spit Bucket Podcast is, I know the, I know at least one of them, and I believe his name is Corey. If I got his name wrong, please forgive me, is out of Dallas. I see him covering fights. The other gentleman for, for the Spit Bucket Podcast, I know those guys know people in the boxing world. They're asking questions. They're seeking people out. I know that those that's kind of what those guys do. So I think there's a reason to give credence to what they're saying, which is that Frank Martin, did not know of the million do- of the million dollar offer that was made to him uh, that it was accepted by Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford in the PBC without talking to him. So when he when they the that when Tom Brown of TGB Promotions told uh, the WBC and Top Rank that they had a deal. That's because they had talked to the promoter. He had talked to the promoter. Uh, uh, I, I have to suppose this is uh, Errol Spence Jr. and or Derek James, right? Frank Martin hears about the million dollars and says, no, I want more money. Now, on top of this is a conversation going on about how Errol Spence Jr. and how, how Frank Martin wants to leave Derek James is a trainer and how how Errol Spence Jr. and Derek James are a package deal. And in order to work for the promotional company, be with the promotional company, you have to stay with Derek James. Now, this and so therefore he pulls out of the fight because those guys were basically trying to sell cash in Frank Martin. Right. So I've heard that the blame, therefore, lies on Errol Spence Jr., for that for that particular situation. Now, let me give you my two cents on this. From a business perspective, you have what you call standard operating procedures within any particular business, okay? And if you go about doing things like this, say for example, Frank Martin, every time Frank Martin has a fight, he gets notified of what the bid is, what the price is for the fight after they agree to it. Okay, so say the last fight he got was $100,000. Errol said, I got a fight for you. It pays $100,000. Okay, the deal's done. Who we fighting? This is who we fighting. How much am I getting paid? Good. There you go. Thank you. I signed the deal. Boom. Let's go. Right? And Frank Martin does that over and over and over again. And then Arrow gets an offer, this particular offer, and it winds up being a million dollars. And he says, "Okay, man, that sounds really good to me. I'm sure Frank will like it. I agree. Hey, Frank, we got the fight done and you get paid a million dollars. And then Frank says, hold on now. No, 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 no. I need more than that on this particular fight. Who's to blame? Who's to blame? Is it Frank or is it Errol Spence? The question is, I don't know, because I don't really know what those guys usually do. Now, if you're familiar with what had, what took place with um, Anthony Joshua and how Anthony Joshua literally has Eddie Hearn signing his agreements for him, I don't know what the scenario in that is. So if that's how they usually do business, then Arrow should could, could assume that he, that's his ability to decide how much you're going to get paid, right? Also, the it now, and I don't know that if that's the case, but I know moving forward that Frank Martin should, if he wants to see and wants to be able to say, okay, I need to know how much this is going to be, and he's not going to leave that in Arrow's hands, then he needs to tell Arrow, look, man, before you sign anything, let me see it, let me read it, let me review it, and then I'll tell you it's okay, and then then we come to our agreement, and then you go, and then you go get the money. Right. Then you go sign it and execute it. That seems to me to be a situation where my default is not to say Errol Spence Jr. is screwing him over. But I need to know whether or not that's how they usually do business. And if Frank Martin doesn't want to do business like that, then Frank Martin needs to change the model about how he goes about doing it. However, any way it goes, it's a very, very bad look for both of them because they've now agreed to a fight. And now Errol, the next time he agrees to a fight, 
for Frank Martin, people are gonna have to wonder whether or not this problem is taken care of. Not saying it's a super bad thing because it literally could just be a hiccup in a business where this is the first million dollar offer that they got and Frank is fighting for his first championship. So, you know, he what his expectations are change over time. I wouldn't go so far as to saying that the man is sabotaging, sabotaging and selling out or that man, that being the man, Errol Spence is sabotaging and selling out Frank Martin just off that information. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.